Now I have no idea where I'm going or what I'm gonna see, but we're just gonna go for a walk and check out what there is to see, if anything at all. Check it out. I mean, it looks like the city got attacked two months ago and they gotta rebuild the whole damn thing. Millions of innocent people were murdered. The city overall just looks like it's unfinished and not ready to be lived in. This is pretty sick. Yakshemash. They still have the whole like uh, coal miner hammer thing. Polish language. Real mindfuck. I am in a new city here in Poland. Katowice. Or Katowice or whatever you would call it in English. And yeah, kind of the plan is just to kind of go with the flow. Explore some Polish cities and Polish towns so Katowice wasn't too far away. Um, I got in yesterday, got to go see the town a little bit, and I got this uh, apartment situation here that I wanted to show you guys before we head out because it's pretty sick. Welcome to my Katowicean, Silesian, Slavic bachelor pad. It's like, I don't even know how to describe this, but it's just these light switches are so cool and they're all over the apartment. The TV slick, the couch isn't that comfortable, but it looks nice with the, the rest of the decor. And this ran me like 50 USD per night, which is not what I want my nightly budget to be because I'm trying to spend less than that. But Poland is not as cheap as I thought. And welcome to the neighborhood, guys. Nice little residential Katowice. I kind of like these Airbnb situations where you're, you know, cut off from the rest of the city center. It's pretty nice, pretty peaceful. You live like a local. Ah, right, let's go over there. All right, guys, so we got about a 20 minute walk to the laundromat. And the drizzle's starting to pick up a little bit. It's actually raining. Summer is officially over. Now, while I wait for my laundry to dry, I'm just standing out here on the street and trying to read these uh, street signs in Polish. Now, the one thing with the Polish language is a Slavic language, what makes it a little easier to deal with is the fact that it uses the same letters as English, right? But that does not make it an easy language. Let me explain. Here we have Wyłącznie dla Pojadzow. Right? I think I read that right. And basically, if you would read it like normal English, you would read Wilatsnie dla Pojado. But actually, in Polish, that L with the line going through it is kind of like a W. And that little thing at the bottom of the A, it kind of adds an accent like an N. So it's like we want near. We want near. I think you would say it like that. And then the J is like a Y, so it's not poja pojadov, it's poyadov. And that W is like a V. So if you're Polish, you can correct me where I was wrong on any of that, but that's just been my observation based off of um, reading things over and over again. I sometimes throw it in Google just to press the speaker button and see how it's pronounced. And then just by repetition, you end up getting the hang of it. You know what I mean? So it's interesting. When you get bored traveling, you're waiting for your laundry to dry, go out and learn some of the local language from the street signs. You can even understand what it's saying without knowing the language. Here it's like, Stacja Wadowania. 
and it's clearly a charging station. So, stazia is like station, right? We got that word. So I guess ładowania in Polish means charging. Maybe not, but that's just kind of how I do things. Anyways, thought it would be cool to throw that in there because, uh, yeah. Polish language. Real mindfuck. So guys, I made a quick stop just to get some lunch and um, they have a salad buffet with amazing pickles, great cabbage. Very, very good while you're waiting for the main dish at this traditional Polish restaurant. And um, the lady asked me what I want to drink. I said water. She was like, no, 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 no. You got to get the homemade fruit juice. So she gave me this homemade fruit juice. I asked her, what fruit is it? She didn't really know how to explain that to me in English. So something red. Let's give it a go before we continue our adventure. It's gotta be a mix of things, but it's very delicious. Polish fruit juice, who would have known? Vish, Vish, do you know how I buy a ticket, billet? Uh, you can buy it, uh, we don't have the machine on the bus in here, you can buy it. Uh, from him? Yeah, from the driver, but you have to have cash. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Do you have a billet? Huh? He has no tickets. No tickets? He has no tickets, apparently. So what do I do? Oh, uh, well, you have no ticket, I guess. There's no tickets. I actually don't have a way of buying a ticket right now. And the bus driver just doesn't have any for me, so I guess we're gonna be risking it. No choice. In 1918, right outside of Katowice, there was once a miner's settlement that was constructed specially for people who worked in coal mining. But later on, that settlement was incorporated to become part of the city of Katowice. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Niki Shovets. Guys, walking around Niki Shovets is really, really impressive. I mean, look at this. It all looks the same, but it's just so unique. This style brick um, right in the outskirts of Katowice who would have known and all the poles that told me oh don't go to Katowice you're there's nothing to do there you're gonna get bored there's nothing to see go to dance go to Vroclav I get it okay I'll go to dance later why not go to Katowice and venture out to Niki Shovets? look at this this place is like an outdoor museum What's this? This is probably one of the creepiest things that I've seen in Poland. If not in my whole life. I can't even make out what this is. Nikishowicz is not only sketchy, quiet alleyways, it's also got a main plaza. Restaurants, cafes. Guys, check it out. They still have the whole like uh, coal miner hammer thing in the brick design. Isn't that sick? I can't help but imagine what it was like to live here amongst all the other workers in the coal mining industry. And they had everything they needed here. They have the church in the middle. Over there, I believe, was the school, the elementary school for the kids. And imagine being a kid here, running around, playing with your friends in this little uh, utopia-like coal mining settlement. This is pretty sick. That's that for Nikki Shovets, my friends. What a good way to spend our Sunday. And uh, stay tuned for the next part of the adventure. I think I'm gonna head back to Katowice city center, get some rest because you know, we're all getting the Sunday blues now in Poland. Everyone's very sad we have to go back to work. Not that they were that happy beforehand, but you know what I mean? And yeah, Nikki Shovets, guys. What a place, what a discovery. 
On to the next one. Dzień dobry. It's another day in Poland, and I'm at a new accommodation in the same city, Katowice. This time, I went a little cheaper, $25 a night, and I got two beds for myself. One of them is where I'm going to keep all my stuff. The other one is where I'm going to sleep. And what we're going to do today is go explore a different city that's not too far from Katowice. We're going to go to a random city called Betom. Just because I saw it on the map, it looks random, it looks Polish, it looks like it might be interesting. So yeah, we're going to head downstairs to get the bus and go see what's good in Betom, guys. Let's do it. Where's he going? That's my bus. Woo. We can't miss this bus, guys. Thank God I made it. Next stop, Vito. All right, guys, we have officially made it to Betom, the next city on our adventure. Now, I have no idea where I'm going or what I'm gonna see, but we're just gonna go for a walk and check out what there is to see, if anything at all. Check it out. The first look at Betom. All right, guys, I'm in the bustling city center of Betom. Behind me is a modern shopping center, while at the same time, you can see all the traditional Polish architecture. My favorite part of the city already, in the few minutes that I've been here, is the main avenue, the main street, which has no street, it's all rocks and construction. But we're gonna take a walk down, see where we end up, see how the busy city center of Betom is. Let's do it. People already looking at me with disgust. Like, what are you doing with that camera in my city? What are you doing in Betom with that camera, man? <laughs> They're like, get this guy out of here. Well, Betom's going through some serious renovations, to say the least. I mean, it looks like this city got attacked two months ago and they got to rebuild the whole damn thing. But, taking a little detour here, and we'll get lost in the side streets, just like we love doing. An inevitable part of visiting Poland is running into all these reminders of some of the atrocities that happened in the past. Millions of innocent people were murdered just because of their identity. I'm here in Plaza Grunwaldzki. This was a big plaza with a ginormous synagogue right over there where that building is. Now, if you look at this picture, there's an old photo of the old synagogue and the building right next to it, which is the building right here. Imagine, look at the height of the building. That synagogue was tall, it was big, it looked like it was beautiful. And it was the synagogue of only 1,500 Jews who lived here in Betham. And those 1,500 Jews were forced to stand out in this plaza and watch their synagogue burn to the ground. Later on, those 1,500 Jews were the first to be sent to Auschwitz, where they were murdered brutally by the Nazis here in Poland. All right, everyone. Now, before you scratch Betom off your list of places to visit, check out the main town square. 
I did not expect this after seeing all the torn apart buildings and construction going on. Now for a city of 140,000 people, this isn't too bad. It seems like there's stuff to do, places to hang out, restaurants, cafes, and it's a beautiful day here in Betom, so I'm impressed. Bonus points for Betom. Now let's keep exploring. I have seen an incredible amount of Polish Gopniks here in Betom. I don't know if that's the word that you would use to describe them, but you know those guys who walk around with the Nike caps and they look like they want to fight everyone? In the UK they say chavs, I don't know. If you're a, if you're a Polish subscriber, let me know in the comments what word you would use to describe those guys. They're everywhere in Betom. All right, guys, I gotta be honest. Bidum is one of the most confusing cities that I've ever visited in my life. I mean, the city overall just looks like it's unfinished and not ready to be lived in. With that being said, you'll still see some beautiful buildings around here. I mean, seriously, like, you can walk down one street, look left, it's hideous, look right, it's beautiful, and you're like, what's going on here? You can feel totally safe on one street and feel like you're about to get mugged on the street right next to it. That's Bidum in a nutshell. With that being said, I can't really say too much about the city because I don't know enough people here, I haven't spent enough time here, but those are just some of my first impressions um, on our little tour today. And some of you might be wondering, well, why did I come here, especially the Polish viewers? Because I simply wanted to see a Polish city that nobody ever told me about, um, that I've never heard anything about, and I just wanted to see it for what it is. I think I found myself a nice, quiet, peaceful part of the neighborhood here in Bidum. So let's go have a seat, have a little Polish one-on-one uh, -on -one chat. If you've ever watched the movie Borat, you've probably heard the term Jak się masz? Even though it was a funny joke in the movie, it's actually a real term in real life, in the Polish language. It means, how are you? The funny thing is, is that Poles don't use that with strangers. So if you come to Poland, don't ask a stranger how they're doing. Don't say Jak się masz to a stranger. Now at first I was like, well, that's kind of unpleasant. Like, why wouldn't I ask how they're doing? Why wouldn't they ask how I'm doing? Simply because the culture does not teach to care how a stranger is doing. It doesn't mean that you should get offended. It doesn't mean that the person's a bad person, right? It's just the way the culture is. You can go to other places like, you know, Brazil, for example, where everyone will smile and give you a hug and a kiss and how are you and welcome you and it's the best thing in the world. But with that being said, it would also be a mistake to assume that every single person who smiles at you and says how are you cares about you. That would be false to make that claim. So when you're going to a country, just be aware of the cultural differences. Learn about it, acknowledge it, accept it, and you'll have a lot better of a time. Anyways, rant over. But yeah, isn't this a beautiful part of Bidum? I'm glad we came here, guys. Well, now that we've well understood that there's nothing for me to do here, I've got to head back to the center of Katowice and think about what I want my next Polish adventure to look like. But for now, i got to say that it was pretty cool going out and seeing these random cities. So when I travel, I like to see a little bit of everything. Whether it's good, bad, or just Bidum. Siemeczki, wiesz jak jest. Siemeczki, jak to kręcisz, to niechaj sobie będzie o aparatach i nie tylko. Dzień chłopeczka, pozdro. Ja. Tylko pełna klatka, ja gada, to jasna stałka, to jasna stałka I na spokojnie ziomek, coś mi tam wypłaca Ty, cztery, dwa kata, wstaję bez kaca zawsze, ja